Welcome back to Midweek Encouragement. Hey, um, as I was thinking today, uh, I, I really think that one of the things God desires from us is to come into his presence, to live in his presence, but come in with an unhurried heart and an unhurried time. And that's not always easy to do. Uh, what I think some, uh, for the battle to have that unhurried heart, is that we fight against our schedules. We fight against our to-do list. We don't think that we have enough time to do those things. Uh, I think it's kind of like taking off in an airplane. There's a couple, there's four forces working on an airplane. Uh, the thrust is its forward propulsion, and uh, the lift is what the wings do because of the foil design. But it's fighting against drag, and it's fighting against gravity. And, and for us to get into that altitude where we can just soar and let off the throttle and, and glide through life, uh, getting into the presence of God is that way. We have to fight the gravity and the drag of our schedules and our to-do lists. And also that maybe there's some guilt and feeling, oh, I've got to do some other things. But once we get to altitude, we get to cruise in the presence of God. And it makes those other things that we need to get done fall into order. Because an airplane, once it's cruising flight uh, altitude, when it's time to land, they cut off the throttle. They cut it back. And the plane starts to fall. Literally, it's falling, but a very slow and controlled space, place in a way that it's able to land and move forward. But it's that slowing down and soaking in and resting in the presence of God that is so important. It's The soaking and resting in God are not easy, especially in this culture we live in. We are not good at waiting. Uh, if you go to an amusement park, for a, for, for a fee, you can get what is called the fast pass. It allows you to jump to the front of the line, and you get onto the ride faster, so you can go to the next ride and get on it even faster, and the next one even faster. Um, we have a new feature at Walmart where you can go online on the computer, order what you want, and go and pick it up. They've already done all the shopping and getting it off the shelf for you, and you just pay over the internet. It's a great feature. It saves you a lot of time. We're, and it also saves you money because you're not randomly shopping for things you don't necessarily need. It's a great feature. It's a time saver. But why do we have it? Because we're in a hurry. Growing up, I, I think it was between my junior and senior high uh, years of high school, we finally got a microwave. And it took forever for me to figure out how to operate this thing because I was making a lot of burnt sacrifices with the microwave. Uh, I don't like waiting for paint to dry, and I don't like waiting for stoplights. But here I am, I'm reading the Word of God, and it says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. God wants us to wait. He wants us to slow down. He wants us to soak and rest in Him. But so often we are in a great hurry. And when we're in a hurry, we're a hurry, he says, I know you are, but I want you to slow down and listen. Um, look at the wonderful things that happen when we will slow down and sit in his presence, when we rest in him. There is such a great peace. I'm reminded of an old Heinz ketchup commercial. It, it had this song, Anticipation. It's making me wait. We we don't like to wait. Um I was reminded of a song that was written by, um, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Franz Joseph Handel. And he wrote this piece that for 74 measures, that's a long period of time, the flute player has to sit there without playing a note. All they can do is count those 74 measures. I would lose count halfway through. But all of a sudden, on the 75th uh, measure of this music, on the, um, on the upbeat, they're supposed to come in and play. Uh, Gerald Johnson, he is a historian, a writer. He's also a flute player in the uh, Baltimore Symphony. He says, a composer who expects an individual to wait patiently and perform that precisely is looking for a rare individual. I think so. To wait that long to play that particular note would require a lot of patience. The psalmist said in Psalms verse, chapter 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he, and he helped me, and he turned to me, and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground, 
and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and will be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Back in Isaiah 40, verse 30, we, I said, those who trust in the Lord. If you go and look up that word in a few different translations or versions of the Bible, you're going to find a few different words. You're going to see wait. You're going to see hope. You're going to see trust. And the meaning here is to wait. The meaning here is to look for, hope for, or expect. Not just any kind of waiting, but waiting or, or looking with eager anticipation. Um, so we need to think about where does our impatience come from? Is our um, impatience our desire to be in control? Because waiting on the Lord can be scary. Being patient and waiting on God to do what God is going to do and what only God can do goes so much against our nature because we desire control. And in that time, he holds us and we hold tightly onto him, trusting him and not ourselves. This whole entire time that God is saying, wait upon me, God has given us guidance that is the best way to live, and it is the be it is best to allow God to have control of the situation and wait upon him. Sometimes it feels as if uh, our prayers, when we're praying, we say the same thing over and over. And if you're a person like me and you journal your prayer, you go, you know, I need to find something different to say. And my prayers are saying the same thing over and over and over. This is one of the reasons why I encourage people to journal their prayer time. And also, when you journal, if you will slow yourself down and you'll get quiet, you'll get to hear what God has to say. And he says, be still, <laughs> rest, soak in me. And we're able to write those things down. But, but see, the advantage of we journal what we're praying, we can step back and look at it again through a different lens and say, hmm, Maybe God wants me to change things up, things up. And maybe I need to start asking God, what part of this do you want me to have a part in? Maybe it is us putting some feet to our prayer. Uh, you start evaluating when you're staying and start asking God to show what he wants you to do along the way. But this whole waiting, you know, we have to be careful we don't get the wagon in front of the horse and we say, oh, I guess I'm just supposed to go and do this. No, we need to be listening and giving ear to what God has to say before we go and do it. Uh, um, Exodus 14, 14, it says, the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. The other day, I felt like God was speaking to me and he was reminding me that healing is a journey, not a destination. Whether that is emotional, physical, spiritual healing, maybe mental healing, it's a journey. It's not a destination. Uh, there are steps forward. There are steps backwards. So we need to guard our heart. And we need to speak back against those thoughts that are telling us we're worthless or it will never happen because though that negativity robs our creativity and it hinders us from hearing the voice of God. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, and I love this passage, Philippians chapter 4, starting verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, uh, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Then he goes on, verse 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, is anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. But notice what he said, rejoice in the Lord. What does rejoicing in the Lord look like? Is what you are rejoicing in, in the Lord, is it eternal or is it temporal? Then he goes on to say, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. How do you display gentleness? Is there an area you need him to help you with that you may be gentle? How can we develop gentleness? Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's a matter of what we're taking in. Are we taking in gentleness or are we taking in harshness? But also notice verse 6 when he says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, with prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Do you have an order to your prayer? 
the, the, uh, the, what do you tend to focus on? Maybe another word here is, do you see the glass half empty or to half full? See, for me, I just want to be thankful I have a glass because I can always fill it up myself. When we take a moment to be grateful, we realize how much we have and that leads to thankfulness. I believe gratitude and rejoicing push away the uh, punk of comparison. Comparison is going to bring you down and make you to be negative. So be thankful and grateful for what you have. The psalmist says in Psalm 69, verse 30, Then I will praise God's name with singing, and I will honor him with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is just a week away. Uh, and if you will guard your heart and your mind from the negative, remembering to do everything without grumbling or complaining, I believe life gets a little bit better. The enemy loves when we complain. And he hates when we praise. So let's make sure we praise the Father every day and not just on Sunday. Blessings to you. And let's be thankful today.